Welcome back to Passionately Catholic. I'm Anthony Digman, and together we are falling more in love with God, enriching our prayer life and growing in virtue as we explore one of the greatest spiritual classics of all time, Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. Today is part one, chapter 12, titled The Fourth Meditation, and it is on sin. Find the link in the description below to get your free copy of the book, as well as join our Passionately Catholic Facebook group and sign up for emails directly from me with each video of this series in sequential order. Remember, the more views, likes, and subscribers each video receives, the more YouTube will share this spiritual masterpiece with others. So please help us spread the word. Let's begin with prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be to you, God, as we come before you in our brokenness and sorrow for our sin. We thank you for your unconditional love and mercy. Please grant the prayers we offer today. Thy will be done. Come, Holy Spirit, and St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Fourth Meditation on Sin Preparation Place yourself in the presence of God. Ask Him to inspire your heart. Considerations Number one. Consider how long it is since you first began to commit sin, and how since that first beginning sin has multiplied in your heart, how every day has added to the number of your sins against God, against yourself, and against your neighbor by deed, word, thought, and desire. Number two, consider your evil tendencies and how far you have followed them. These two points will show you that your sins are more in number than the hairs of your head or the sand on the seashore. 3. Apart from sin, consider your ingratitude towards God, which is in itself a sin enfolding all the others and adding to their enormity. Consider the gifts which God has given you and which you have turned against the giver, especially the inspirations you have neglected and the promptings to good which you have frustrated. Review the many sacraments you have received and see where are their fruits. Where are the precious jewels wherewith your heavenly bridegroom decked you? With what preparation have you received them? Reflect upon the ingratitude with which, while God sought to save you, you have fled from Him and rushed upon destruction. Okay, from this first section, I don't know about you, but this part really strikes me pretty hard because in reflecting on, you know, the sins, A, the sins, how many sins I have committed, how all of these evil tendencies by deed, word, thought, and desire I have gone against God, especially this number three under considerations about how I've neglected all these inspirations, how not only do we experience temptation to sin, but throughout our day, we also experience inspirations to do good, virtuous, holy, charitable things for others, prayers, etc. And how many times we frustrate the plan of God. We don't do what we are inspired to do. And then uh, this, this part where it talks about how many sacraments you have received, and then how have you received them? Like God has poured forth so many graces into my life and into your life. My two favorite sacraments sacraments are receiving the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament, and the Sacraments of, con and of Confession. Probably, I think, because I get to do these as often as I want or need <laughs> to do these uh, so frequently, which is such a grace and such a blessing from God. But but where are, are the jewels? Where are the fruits from these? How often have I gone up to receive Holy Communion or gone to the Sacrament of Confession, Reconciliation, and have not appreciated the graces and not allowed the inspirations and graces of these sacraments to transform me and my life and who I am. The next section is affections and resolutions. Number one, humble yourself in your wretchedness. O oh my God, how dare I come before thine eyes? I am but a corrupt being, a very sink of ingratitude and wickedness. Can it be that I have been so disloyal that not one sense not one faculty but has been sullied and stained. Not one day has passed but I have sinned before thee. 
Was this a fitting return for all my Creator's gifts, for my Redeemer's blood? Number two, ask pardon. Throw yourself at the Lord's feet as the prodigal son, as the Magdalene, as the woman convicted of adultery. Have mercy, Lord, on me, a sinner. O living fountain of mercy, have pity on me, unworthy as I am. Number three, resolve to do better. Lord, with the help of thy grace, I will never again give myself up to sin. I have loved it too well. Henceforth, I would abhor it and cleave to thee. Father of mercy, I would live and die to thee. Number four, in order to put away past sin, accuse yourself bravely of it. Let there not be one sinful act which you do not bring to light. Number five, resolve to make every effort to tear up the roots of sin from your heart, especially this and that individual sin which troubles you most. Number six, in order to do this, resolve steadfastly to follow the advice given you and never think that you have done enough to atone for your past sin. Conclusion. Thank God for having waited till now for you and for rousing these good intentions in your heart. Offer him all your heart and carry them to good effect. Pray that he would strengthen you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Remember, as always, spend 10 minutes today in silent prayer with God to grow deeper in that love. And special thanks to all of our patrons who made this episode and all that we do at Passionately Catholic possible. Find the link below to visit our Patreon page and discover all the benefits of supporting Passionately Catholic for as little as $3 per month or some amount that you wouldn't even notice donating. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Make it a great day. God bless you, and I look forward to joining you again in the next episode.